This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to our next video in our series of what can put out of action a modern US carrier group. Modern US carrier group being the most powerful movable object on the planet. This is our list of valued viewer suggestions or requests. The one we're looking at today is this, or based on this. Please try 9TU-142 using the sandbox missiles next. Can you try the sunburn missiles, Moskit-type missiles too? So this inspired me to go back to basics. Which Soviet slash Russian missiles do we actually have for anti-ship? And which ones have we tried? This is the only video we've got on it at the moment. Can anti-ship missiles, the P-700 and the KH-22, destroy a modern carrier group? The KH-22 fired by the Tu-22 backfire. The P-700 fired by the Peter the Great battlecruiser. So they are that one there, the kitchen we've tried with no success, at least up to a battery of 27 being fired at once, could not make it through. And the P700 down at the bottom here, fired by the battlecruiser, couldn't make it through either. And we fired about 50 of them off as best we could in salvo. So that leaves us trying today the KH-35, relatively small Russian slash Soviet airborne fired anti-ship missile, the KH-41 Sunburn, which is quite a beast as you can see, and the P500 Sandbox, quite an old missile. So before we go and make stuff blow up, let's go and look at some statistics. So first of all, the small air launch KH-35 Kayak, long range radar guided air to surface missile, warhead, roughly contemporary to say a harpoon or other air launched missiles of 145 kilos about 300 pounds guidance is typical ins guidance with an active radar on terminal total weight just under half a metric ton total g limit of 20 length just under four meters 42 centimeter diameter mach 0.91 these will be launched by the tu-142 naval bombard Kitchen we've already looked at, but I mean, what a beast that is. Absolute beast. Next, the KH-41 Sunburn. Long range, INS radar guided. Much bigger warhead size of 320 kilos, maybe nearly 700 pounds. Guidance, INS with active passive radar terminal. Massive weight of 4.5 tons. Maximum G limit, 17. That's pretty good still. Just under 10 meters long. I mean, that's longer than a lot of planes. Diameter of the body, 76 centimetres. Huge range, 250 kilometres, 100 nautical miles, maybe a bit more. And the maximum Mach number, which is very important, this is a supersonic Mach 2.5 missile, or it can be at one point. So that's going to be interesting. And finally, quite an old missile, the P500 Sandbox. Oh, this is fired by a modern core, or a relatively modern Corvette. Long range anti-ship cruise missile, weight 4.8 tonnes, guidance Autopilot, whatever that means, I'm guessing INS. G limit, 17G. Maximum Mach 2.5. Length, 12 meters. Absolutely enormous. Uh, nearly a meter in diameter. Warhead, a ton. It's got a ton warhead. 2,200 pounds. That's bigger warhead than a Mark 84 bomb. And a range of 550 kilometers, about 300 miles, about 280 nautical miles, somewhere around that figure absolutely massive so one small and two very large very fast surface launched missiles we're going to take a rather atypical scientific approach we're just going to fire one barrage of each missiles at the carrier group first to see if they can be defended if they can successfully be defended then we'll launch all of them together in a massive soviet attack stand by Welcome to the simulation we'll just be using a tu-142 with six times kh 35s to begin with. A quick reminder of the carrier group at the moment. We've got one nuclear powered Nimitz class carrier in the middle, surrounded by four times Arleigh Burke Aegis destroyers. At the stern, we've got two times Ticonderoga cruisers, submarines forward and aft, supply ships, infinite respawning, uh, F 18s on the carrier, and two aircraft in the air patrolling, and an AWACS. So just the usual setup. Right, so let's start with KH. 35s. I apologise for the terrible graphics of the 142 value viewers. Hopefully this video will spur uh, Eagle Dynamics into making a prettier one quite soon. It's a bit embarrassing at this point. Oh, we only fired one. Look at that. Oh, no. Out they come. Sup, sup, sup. Relatively short range, uh, 70 miles, something like that. Uh, about the same as a harpoon. It's uh, typical for a uh, 
Elunch missile. It is cruising at 458 knots at 47 feet. And that may be critical. The good thing about these very small, relatively modern air launch missiles is they can cruise very low. And 47 feet may be enough to beat SeaWiz, SM2, and whatever else we've got uh, defending it. So let's see what happens. We're going to speed that up. I don't think anything's going to happen for a while. And I don't want to use your valued viewer time up. If you're wondering why the escorts aren't attacking this guy, I just made him invisible just for this quick first test. Uh, although these guys are doing something. Oh, missiles are coming out. Missiles are coming out. Okay, we've got missiles from the Arley Burks. They are the SM2 that come out, which is obviously the standard defense missile. And it looks like we're going to intercept at a distance of around 25 miles, which is uh, standard over the horizon radar detection. And we're almost certainly going to get shot down, but let's see how we go. Oh, no, I lost track. Lost track. Relatively small radar cross section for these uh, KH 35s, obviously. Oh, missed. Lost track. These planes are coming out to do something. I don't know what they're doing. I haven't asked them to attack the missiles, so I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, um, looks like that is going to be an intercept this time. Look so far. Lots of blood launches, look. Lots of missiles in the air now. Oh, one of them has been killed. One's been killed. And... Hit. Amazing. Amazingly accurately as SM2s. More are coming out now. All of the Aegis equipped vessels are firing. Two left. We're now intercepting at 10 miles. One left. Boom. Easily dealt with uh, by the network. Fine. Next, let's go and check out, I think, the Mosquit slash Sunburn standby. This time we've got the Molyneux Missile Corvette. And he is going to be firing four times. Sunburns. One of my favourites. I mean, look at how cool they look. Why you would even put four intakes on a, on a missile, I don't know, but it looks amazing. Doing some sort of pre-launch essing manoeuvre, I don't know why. In fact, oh, I think I set him turned the wrong way around, that's my bad. Silly, silly. There we go. Look at that, oh, that's impressive. Imagine being on the bridge when those things fired. Imagine being on the deck when those things fired. You get atomized. Right, let's go and have a look at this. 971 knots, so it's not the claimed Mach 2.5 at all, but it is Mach 1.3, 1.4, so it's pretty much faster than any plane in the world can fly. Down here, I mean. Obviously, planes can go faster up there, but not that. Big. Okay, SM2 is already out. Massive radar cross section of these missiles. Oh no, I had it relatively close, so about the same distance actually. Right, but I don't think they can hide. I think the SM2s will deal with them easy. These SM2s are really quite incredible. So speed is not going to save them. Speed's not going to save them. Also, they're a little bit high for my liking. I would love to see them lower down. To be truly effective. Any more left? One. Wow, these were really easily intercepted, and I'd say it's because of their giant radar cross section. Finished. Oh, there's another one. Obviously, it's not going to get through though, is it? And um, maybe it is. Look at that. Oh, oh, yeah, it's got through. It's not bugged. It's working. Nine miles. No, it's not. It's just not going to beat it. Right, uh, let's try, in that case, the P-500. This is an old missile fired by the Slava-class cruiser. I think this is a facelift model of the P-500. I know there were at least two variants of it. Tubes open. Ready to fire, sir. 16 in all. Yeah, no, good, good missiles. And they look amazing. Now, in real life, these missiles are uh, relatively intelligent in that they would fly at different. They, they would fly in groups. They hunt in packs. These missiles. That's how they're designed. Even from the early models, one would fly up high and radio contact to the others to make them take different paths and hit different ships and stuff like that. So, incredibly intelligent weapons, especially for the time. In DCS, they're not. They're just. They're just. They fire at the same ship in packs of four. They don't do anything. Uh, it's just how it is. I would love to see the model properly at some point. I hope you would agree that you would like to see that as well. Um, I, just to show off, I've showed that we can fire at 100 miles. We can fire at 200, 300 miles if we wanted. Uh, massive missiles, lots of fuel on board. Data-linked weapons, the guys are saying. Yeah, absolutely. Would not want to fight against that. 
Uh, another interesting fact, B, uh, we've got F-14Bs here just for legacy, just for fun purposes. And the cool thing about the F-14B is it carries a missile called the Phoenix, which can actually intercept these missiles, uh, which is really interesting. However, they're being driven by AI guys, so they won't do it. But in real life, they had the ability to shoot these missiles down, uh, which is, again, really interesting. Okay, SM2 is out at the usual uh, over-the-horizon range radar, about 25 miles. Again, they're same altitude, 200 feet. They're the same, basically, statistics as the previous missile we saw. I don't expect them to have a problem being intercepted. Yep, they're getting intercepted. Super easy, big radar cross-section, nice and high off the ocean, easy to pick out from the clutter, the post Doppler radar, and they're all dead. Relatively interesting missiles there. No effect on, you know, a modern US carrier group, but uh, let's take it to the next stage, which is, say, a big combined attack with all three types of missiles, various weapons, various directions, and see if the Aegis defense system can cope with that standby. So this time we've upped the ante. A Russian, or more likely back in the day, a Soviet task force has been assigned to attack this carrier group that's coming into the Persian Gulf. Why they would ever do that, I don't know, but let's just pretend. They've got at their disposal four times Molinia Corvettes, each with four nacelles of Musket slash Sunburn missiles. They're all going to coordinate and fire their missiles at the same time. We've got, very unlikely, but four times Slava cruisers. I'm not even sure four were ever built, but each with 16 P-500 missiles. They're going to fire in batches of four because I can't get them to fire all at once. But that will mean batches of 16, essentially, because there's four Slava cruisers. They're going to coordinate an attack as well. And four times TU-142 aircraft. About 10 miles spread, but they are coordinating to fire roughly at the same time the maximum range of their missile, about 70 nautical miles. They are placed 70 to 80 nautical miles away from the carrier group. They are not invisible or invincible, so they will be attacked by the carrier group. The carrier group will shoot back and scramble their F-14s and stuff like that. Let's see how we do. And here we go. We've got the Slava class cruisers firing first. That's the sandboxes. Out they go. 16 per batch going out. Very hard to defend against. Bear in mind, their closure rate, they're easy to shoot down, but their closure rate is what's dangerous about them. The Mach 1.4 or whatever it is. We've got to shoot them down very quickly. Okay, and we've got the Sunburst, uh, which is going to be the same problem. The speed is what makes them dangerous. You've got to intercept them all quick enough, and only one needs to get through, and it's pretty much going to obliterate a carrier. So, you know, ton warhead or whatever, whatever they are. They're the Badgers firing their KH-35s, as you can see, and they're turning away now before the Tomcats come and shoot them down, the F-18s come and shoot them down. Look, wow, look what's in the air. I don't think I've ever seen that many missiles in the air at once. That is, break, 16, 32. The, this is easily going to kill the carrier. 16, 32, uh, 6 times 4 is 24. 24 plus 32, anyone, is 56, I think. I think that is there. It's 56 missiles all together. Only one slight problem is that they're different speeds, so these are going to get left behind. So they're not actually going to be together. Would they have the ability to coordinate in real life so that these would be TOT are the same as these? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Okay, planes are coming. They've spotted the danger. Out they come. The Who have we got in the air? Two times escort cap F-18s coming out to shoot those badges down. I'm actually wondering what the chances that one of these might run into each other. Okay, Tomcat's launching. Again, I wish they could shoot down the missiles, but we can't get them to. But 56 big missiles in the air at one point is going to make anyone very unhappy. Let's see if they can see even see each other. They can they can see each other? Wow, look, look how close they are. Jesus. Right next to each other. And I'm wondering if the frag... I wonder if the frag from the SM2s will actually kill more than one missile at a time. Look at that. And that's very scary, and it's really not that unrealistic. This is literally how they were designed to fire. Big swarms of anti-ship missiles. Okay, the first SM2s are coming out at 25 nautical, which is about normal. Oh, the Badgers have seen the danger, and they are hightailing it out with their tiny polygon rate. Toot. The supersonic jets. Going transonic at the moment. Yeah, they're going to catch them up easy. 20 miles. Not that it matters. Oh, here we go. Where to, what to even look at? I mean, 
Now the SM2s are going to shoot them down, but are they going to shoot all of them down before they've got a dead carrier group? That's an interesting thing. VLSs on the Aegis going absolutely nuts, firing at the maximum rate of fire. Which isn't actually that fast, it's every like five seconds or something, I don't know, you guys know more than me. Okay, a lot have been shot down already. They're going to get through, they're going to get through. I can already see it, valued viewers, they're going to get through. already in amongst the destroyers. Wow, and that shows how effective a barrage of these can be. That's only 32 of these, which again isn't that unrealistic. But they're trying really hard. They're trying really hard, this guy. See Wiz? Trying everything now to stop them. Oh, we've got a hit on him, but he's still going. Oh, it's gonna go! Oh, God! Pause! We're missing. I've got to pause it there. Let's have a little... Uh... So they, they, so far, nothing has made it through. But look, look how they've got through the uh, SM2 network so quickly. And you know why that is? That's the speed. I get it. The speed isn't to stop them being shot down. You can't stop them being shot down. The speed is so that you can't shoot them down quick enough before they're all over your face. That's what they're all about. I always wondered what this type of missile was for. Right. So out of 32 fast ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 have made it through. So 32 minus 13 have been shot down. 19 have been shot down. And, um, oh, that's a, it's a dead carrier. It's a dead carrier. See, Wiz can only do so much. I apologise, Valley viewers. If you are in the... Uh, American Navy, I suggest you turn away right now. I'll give you a chance to do that. The rest of us who like seeing the simulation go through, set your face to stun. That is, uh, is that the one with the ton warhead? Oh, holy cow, that is a worrying sight. And that there, Although the carrier's not, you know, it's not broken, it's back. That's a carrier of action, right? A warhead that big? SN2 still going out. Wow. Wow! And the carrier's broken. In real life, it's unlikely all those missiles would go for this carrier. In the way you program it in DCS, you just tell it to go for a certain ship, um, which is cheating, obviously, but, you know, I've got, I've got to do something. Whether it had gone for that carrier or whether... It, it, it could have taken out the front destroyers if it wanted to, I can guarantee. We could have taken out two, the, both of those front destroyers. One missile each would break their back, I imagine, at a ton warhead, and just a couple would put this carrier fully out of action. So, I can only apologise for the upset that has caused, but that is a 100% destroyed, you know, carrier group for what the carrier group is, which is, you know, the uh, it's the air wing at the end of the day that does the effect, and they're still defending, but it doesn't matter now. The carrier's dead. So, uh, and, and the worrying thing is, I mean, if we can ignore the badgers, it was only one salvo from these guys and these guys. It was only... A what are these guys firing at? Oh, they're shooting down the Hornets, which was shooting down the Badgers. <laughs> Go on then, we'll watch it through. The Badgers, and I haven't told them to do this, this is the AI actually being clever, has run to these ships to defend them. And then these ships are firing uh, Grumbles, amazingly good missiles. Navy Grumbles at these guys here, who are going to do a very good job to dodge them. And they're not. Navy Grumble, very dangerous missile. Look at those Grumbles. So let me know your thoughts about that, valued viewers, but it's pretty um, pretty self-explanatory. That's how it is. Um, these guys have got nothing to do now. Um, but that, what they'll do is, because of the weird programming of the AI versions have, they'll just go and hit where that ship was, even though it's dead now. So in real life, they would go and actually seek out another ship on their own. But we don't have that type of programming in in the, the kind of AI version that we've got. So I think we'll end it there. That is the effect that can be had by a barrage of supersonic uh, coordinated 32 missiles with backup missiles. I hope you otherwise enjoyed that and see you later.